for this circuit that's given here, if the voltage drop across the 100 ohm resistor is 0 0.029 volts, then the value returned by the analog read function will be closest to such and such. Okay, so this is kind of, let me divide this into maybe a couple of different parts. So the first part is a circuits problem, and then the next part is a, more of an Arduino problem, right? So we'll do the circuits problem first. Um, ultimately, what, the, what we need for the Arduino problem, so that we know where to go with our circuits problem, what we need for the Arduino problem is we need to know what voltage is being put into analog input 4, okay? And what voltage is that if we're going to relate it to the circuit? It's the voltage across the 10K ohm resistor, okay? That is, since the 10K ohm resistor is relative to ground, and since the voltages that the, that the uh, Arduino is measuring are going to be relative to ground, it's whatever voltage across this 10K, that's the voltage that we are going to see on analog input 4, okay? So that's kind of our starting point. So once we figure out voltage across that 10K, we're, we're basically done. We just need to do a little conversion, and we can figure out what that analog read value is. All right. So, but what we know is that we have a particular voltage across the 100 ohm resistor right here, okay? So let me actually draw that on here. This little voltage across the 100 ohm is 0 0.029 volts, okay? Now, we can apply Ohm's law very locally right there at that little resistor. In other words, Ohm's law applies for this one little resistor that we know the voltage across just that one resistor so that means we can figure out what current flows through this one little resistor. How do I do that? Maybe I'll call it I100. You say you can divide the voltage, uh, divide, excuse me, divide the voltage by the resistance. Okay, and I agree with that. So you take 0 0.029 volts and divide it by the resistance of 100 ohms. Okay, what does that give us for a current? Okay, someone says 0 0.00029 amps. Okay, how do you know that? You can just think about moving the decimal place two places because it's divided by 100. All right, well, how does that help us? Yeah, this is a series circuit. There's no other place for current to go, right? We, we uh, in case you haven't seen this before, this analog input is known as what, something that's called a high impedance input. That means, effectively, it looks like an extremely high resistance in and out of that pin going into the Arduino. Well, why does that matter? If it's extremely high resistance, it's basically zero current. Right? So no current is going in and out there, and there's no other place for current to go. And so that means that we now know the current that's flowing through the 10 kilo ohm resistor because there's no other place for current to go. This will also be that 0 .00029 amps. Okay? Well, if that's the current going through that resistor, what's the voltage across that resistor? Okay, that voltage across that resistor is just going to be equal to 0 0.00029 amps times 10 kilo ohms. So that's 10,000 ohms. Okay, so we can actually uh, move it the other way now if we would like. 10,000 ohms times 0 0.00029 amps, right? How many places should we move it? Two, three, four. Right? One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. So this would be 2.9 volts. Okay? But that is not what's going to be returned by an analog read 
because analog read re basically gives you a value that's scaled uh, from 0 to 1023 according to the voltages from 0 to 5 volts. Okay, so how does that math work? Okay, this analog read should end up giving you, okay, 2.9 volts times 1023 over 5 volts. Okay, and that's something that's been in the slides that you've seen and everything. That's, a, you know, not a new uh, expression for you. Okay, so 2.9 times 1023 divided by 5. That gives you 593.34. The .34 won't be on there. Why not? Because it's an integer, right? So what should you expect? Just 593. Okay. Good question. Anything else I need to touch on for that one? Right, that is kind of a, so the question was, you'd have to know that no current was leaving off of that little leg that went into analog input four. That is correct, you need to know that. Um, and so in case you hadn't seen that yet, uh, just understand that when you configure the input pins of any of the input pins of your Arduino, if any of them are configured as inputs, your presumption on problems like this is that they are high impedance inputs, which allows you to set the amount of current flowing on those to negligible. It's like it's not there. It's like it's sensing it, but it's not actually connected for, the pur for purposes of transmitting current. Good questions. So if that wire was just like connected straight to ground, let's say, and now this is not doing anything, would that be considered a high impedance, or would that just be a loose wire? Connection? You're basically saying if you took this wire and you and you connected it to ground. Yeah. Um, so that is a that's basically a zero impedance to ground, right? That's zero impedance to ground, which basically renders the 10 kilo ohm as if it's not there, right? It shorts past the 10 kilo ohm and just sets the value of the voltage right there to zero. You know, the voltage at the little node right there is gonna be zero because you've set it to zero by plugging it into zero. Cool. Yes, sir. Um, you had a question like this on your playlist. Uh-huh. It was, so where the analog input was reading, like it was, it had the star mister Okay. But, um, like you can see diagram, it's and yep. Yes. So I had the thermistor on the lower part. Yeah. Yeah. How can the how can it read that value if it's capacitor? If it's a capacitor? What? If it's a capacitor. Capacitor. So if the thermistor is past the analog value, then it's supposed to be reading how did it still Okay. So the reason it can do that is that what you're setting up there is called a voltage divider circuit. It means that you will always have a sum of five volts across the two resistances. It's always going to add up to five, right? And since you can sense anything from zero to five, the voltage drop on one piece is always going to be a number between zero and five. So you're always going to be able to read it. Um, because of the fact that it's a voltage divider circuit. It will divide that, that 5 volts. It's going to add up to 5 volts, but it will divide how much of the 5 volts is on each piece based on the values of the two. So I don't know if that helps or not, but that's... Okay. Okay, so you do that based on the same exact idea that we did just here um, because... Uh, you can always, if you know the two resistance values, right, you can always figure out the voltage drop on each resistance value. And so if you have it set up to where you have a resistance up here, 
and a, you know, a variable resistance down here, the little symbol they use like that, you know, um, you can still handle this, right? Um, because let's say you knew these, let's say you knew this was 10 kilo ohm and I don't know, what value do you want to make up for the other one? Okay, 20 kilo ohm. All right, so what you can do is you can figure out how much current flows through this whole thing because zero current flows here, right? There's, there's none of that flowing there. So all the current flows from five volts to ground and that amount of current is going to be equal to five volts divided by 10,000 ohms plus 20,000 ohms, right? And you can figure that out. Once you do that, okay, I can tell you what, we'll go ahead and do it. So 5 divided by uh, 20,000 plus 10,000, okay? Tiny little current. Once I've got that little current, that's the same current, okay, 0 .00016 uh, amps. That's the same current that's just flowing on the 20 kilo ohm, right? And so the voltage across just the 20 kilo ohm is going to be equal to that current, okay, times uh, the resistance value that we have for that one. So 20 kilo ohms, 20,000 ohms. Okay, so I take that value and multiply it by 20,000, and it'll give me 3.3 volts, right, which is of a voltage level that I will be able to um, measure. Maybe your question is, how do you know which of them, right? And you, the, the answer to that is actually more simple than you might think. It's always the one that's connected to ground, right? And the reason for that is that you're always measuring voltages on your uh, analog input those voltages you're measuring are always relative to ground, right? So if once you figure out the voltage across all the stuff that goes from ground to the analog input, that is the voltage that's going to be measured on that analog input. So like I could put, I could build another circuit that maybe was a little bit different. You know, let's say I had a resistor, another resistor, and a third resistor. And then my analog input was right here. Okay, and five volts up here, ground down here. Okay, and let's say this was 5K. Let's say this one was three kilo ohms. And let's say this one up here was 10 kilo ohms. Okay, how do you figure out the voltage for the analog input? Right, you have to take the combination all the way across, you know, both of those resistors to figure out what the voltage is it's going to be going in. But it's always going to be relative to that ground side. Okay, we went all the way around it, but we got there finally. What? Kind of. It's a parallel circuit with no current flowing in it, right? So it's not re it's just a series circuit when it comes right down to it, but you can think of it as the analog side being a parallel leg with zero current, and so you have you know the same voltage across it as the side that does have current flowing. All right.